Welcome to the DevWorm channel and today we're going to be adding a dialogue system for our NPC and our player in our RPG game for episode 9 of the how to make an action RPG series in which I teach you step by step how to make an amazing RPG game in Goda. But before we get started I just want to ask if you can go down and hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video as it helps you to push this series to more people so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own Goda games as well. But without further ado let's get started with adding dialogue to our NPC and our player so we have something to talk to and it can kind of point us in direction for a quest or a shop or maybe a boss fight hint for the next episode okay so to start with the dialogue i just want to go through what we have in our game so far and keep in mind if you don't have all this and you haven't watched every other episode in this series all other nine or the first nine episodes it doesn't matter right it has no correlation i mean it does kind of correlate but if you're trying to make dialogue for your own game you don't have to watch the other nine to understand what's going on here and to implement dialogue into your own game right but yeah if you're clicking on this video just for the dialogue and you don't have all this other stuff it doesn't matter the dialogue is still gonna work the exact same so to get started I'm just gonna go down here to our resources and we're gonna create a brand new folder and we're gonna dedicate this just to all of the dialogue files that we're gonna have so dialogues we'll just name it dialogues and then in here we're gonna have a bunch of different stuff right we're gonna have to have a JSON file which is going to be the file that holds the script or what the dialogue is going to be based on right and we'll, we'll go over that here in just a minute and then under here or we're going to want to go and create a brand new scene and then we're, we're going to save everything in here right so we'll make another note we want to make this a canvas layer this is just going to be our dialogue box right so we'll just name this dialogue yeah we'll just name it dialogue and then under our dialogue we need to add a nine patch rect and then we can kind of or we, we can put our texture in which the texture for this is going to be called a dialogue png which we don't have right so i did link it in the um let me let me get it real fast and drag it in but if you are needing this art there is a link to an itch.io download page and you can download all the art that's used in this game it can be downloaded right from that page so it's going to look like this and then we can drag it into the art it went into the dialogue but it's this little thing right here right so you can get this from the itch.io page i'm just going to import it and then presets 2d 2d pixel whoa 2d pixel and then re-import and then there we go and then we can delete this but we have it into our, our folder, right? So we wanna go back to our scene, our nine patch rec. We're gonna drag this over into our texture. And then down here, this is what is uh, good about a nine patch rec is that it expands the middle, but keeps the edges the exact same size or like the same dimensions based on how far it is, right? So let's say we want it to be this big, watch. I mean, it looks bad right now, right? But if we go down here and we drag these little lines, you can kind of see how it fixes itself together. Just drag all these into the center and you can see all the edges are the exact same, but it expands the middle, which is very, very good. So my dialogue is gonna be at the top of the screen. As you can see, this is like the visible part of the screen that you see when you play the game. So if you want your dialogue to be at the bottom, you can put it down here. If you want it at the top, you can put it up here. And I'm gonna leave it up here at the top. Now, in our nine patch, patch rec, we are going to want to add some um, rich text labels. And then I'm actually gonna have two of these. So we'll have two rich text labels. I'm gonna have one for the name and then I'm gonna have one for the chat or whatever we are displaying. So we can just type in for these. Like We'll just have a placeholder, so. The name is the placeholder, and then for the chat placeholder, we'll do chatting. And just dot 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 dot. And then obviously we're gonna fill this in later, but you can kind of size everything out just to make sure it looks good inside the game, just like this. And then maybe we want this a little bit lower, like that. And then we can kind of even our name out more like this and then you can go down here to custom fonts if you want a custom font if you want a custom style all this stuff is done down here i'm just gonna make it default color and i'm gonna make the color black just like that but 
keep in mind I'm using the default like the default font so it looks kind of blurry but if you had your own font it wouldn't look blurry at all it would look nice and smooth and however your font would look and this is just placeholder text so keep in mind that's not the real text but now we have the chat box this is what is going to be our actual chat box and now we need the script that can fill in these placeholders right because we don't want this to say name we want it to say the name of the NPC and then this chat is whatever the NPC is going to be chatting about so to do this we're going to need to make a JSON file but first let's save this scene and we're going to save it into our dialogue folder save that there and then now let's try and make a JSON file All right, so to make our JSON file we're going to want to go down here and we're going to just create a brand new notepad right just open up a notepad on your computer and we're just going to follow this template right here right so this is the template I kind of already made up the script so I don't have to make it up as we go along but I'm gonna show you how to make it so let's say you're starting off with a brand new script let's say this is our script down here where like this is this very top of our notepad right you want to start off with adding a straight line and a bottom line right and then in the center you click tab then you need a curly bracket and then this is our variable so where you put the name placeholder so where we put this whatever you want to go here we'll put name because that's the variable that we want to fill and then for me it's going to be strange man right so i want strange man to go here so as we go along it's going to say strange man right here and then you want to go over here and then make text which is going to be our other variable to fill in the text and we'll do are you dot 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 question mark curly bracket and then comma and then this this text area right here so i are you that right there oh whoops we need this but everything inside here is going to end up filling in here right and then let's say we click the screen because we want to go into the next chat then when you click so let's say our, we click the we click the mouse because our let's say this is up on screen right so this is on screen and we click the mouse to see what he's gonna say next that's what you would put here right and you just put it in order let's say you want the player to respond with something and you here you would put player right because then it will change the name to the player but for me it's all gonna be strange man the strange man is gonna go like ah are you and then the strange man is also or once you click, the strange man is going to say, oh, you're a real person. You click again. I have been down here for years. Click again, dot, dot, dot. Click again. Oh, and also do not touch that red plate. Click again. You have to trust me on this. And then you click again. And it says it will not end well, so please. And then you click again. And then it will disappear. And then if we try and talk to the strange man again, it's going to go through this exact same thing. But... And oh, and the reason I'm doing this down here is because in the next episode, we're going to be going over how to add a boss to the game. And if you click this red plate, it's not going to end well because the boss is going to spawn. But let's say you write out your entire script, right? And you can write multiple of these. So you can have many scripts. But what we're going to do is whenever you want to save it, you have to click Control S. And then you're going to come down here in your file. And then or first, you want to figure out what folder. It doesn't matter what folder it's in. Just... You want to create a brand new folder and you just want to name the folder json and then for the file name we can just do like uh uh let's see it, it i mean it really doesn't matter we can just do cave man and then caveman chat right because it's going to be an order and then you want dot json it's going to be a json file and then down here, save as type. You want to save as all files. So .json, and then we save. And then we can close out of here, right? And then we want to go over here to our dialogues folder. You can drag that entire folder in. So the JSON folder, which is going to have the JSON script in. You want to drag that into our, let me show you. So this is our folder. And then we... Let's, we're gonna actually, so this is the page, this is the JSON. You wanna save that into this folder. So right, this is our JSON folder and it saves our JSON script, which we're not gonna be able to open, but you want to bring this entire folder into Godot and we're gonna save it into the dialogue folder. 
and it should I don't know where it went where did it go let's see it, it went somewhere because we brought it in let me tr let me try and bring it in again let's see so we drag it in drag it in where is it going oh okay it went up here you can it went into the art folder so we'll just we'll just move this into the dialogue folder target location overwrite boom okay that's fine oh we saved it a ton of time so it's been going into the art folder the whole time okay there we go so now we have our json folder in our dialogue just like that let's make sure there's nowhere else yeah we're good so json file and our dialogue tscn okay so now that we have our json file and kind of our script that our npc is going to follow when we talk to it we need to go up to our dialogue and we're going to make a brand new script we're just going to name it dialogue player.gd and then we can click create and then all this here can be removed actually we're going to need this ready function so we'll just we'll just remove all this like that right so this is going to be a pretty big script this is going to be the main script that kind of takes over everything so first of all we need an export var and first of all we're going to need to access our file right we need to access our json file so we can see what we're going to be talking about in the uh in the script so first of all we need our export var and then this is going to be a string and then file and then it's going to be our json our JSON file and then we'll just have we'll just name this let's see it doesn't really matter we'll just name it uh D file for sure for sure but it's our dialogue file and then we're also gonna need a variable which is going to be a it's gonna be a let's see so dialogue equals and then boom boom so th what what this is this is gonna hold our all of our stuff it's gonna hold the name which is gonna be whatever our name is, whatever you put as the name variable, which is in AM, like all lowercase, right? In AME. And then it's also going to hold the text and then it's going to put that into our, into our uh, canvas layer, right? So in our ready function, we'll just, we'll make it as soon as the game starts, we'll have a function that's going to start and then we'll make this function. So we'll make our start function. This is just going to start the dialogue. So first of all, we need, we're going to make a variable called, or we want our dialogue. Okay, yeah, we already have our variable. So we want our dialogue up here. We want this to equal, or we want it to load our dialogue, which is going to be another thing that we're going to make here in just a second. So we want it to load our dialogue. And then right here, we're going to change the text under here. So we'll go, we have to access our nine patch rect, and then we'll do our name. So dot name and then we want to change our text to equal our dialogue and then we'll equal to zero which is going to be the very first line and then we want so right here we're accessing our json file right so dot text and then right here you're going to want to put that variable that we, we put so like we put capital name or, or just just name just like this in the very front before we put strange man and then you can kind of copy this and then instead of name here, this would be chat. And instead of name over here, this would be chat. Or no, wait, we named it. We named it text, right? In the JSON file, we named that text. So it'd say text. Now let's make this load dialog function. So we're gonna have to make a function load dialog. And then let's see. So first we need a file. So file will equal file dot new. And then if file dot file exist and then D file, right? So if this variable already has a file in it, then we don't need this. So if file dot file exists D file, which, which it is going to exist, right? Then we'll file, then we'll open this file open and then we'll open d file and file dot read and then we will we'll just return of json so parse json 
and then file dot get as text so we can change our rich text labels so this will allow us to change those text labels just like this so now if we start the game we should see the very first line right so if we click f6 we already have an error which is which is not good right but let's see so let me see what's going on here okay so all we did was our d file up here which is our exported variable we got to go up here we got to click this folder and then we're going to go to our dialogues json and then click here and then once we load this file in as you can see if we play it everything works correctly and then you can see so this is the very first or this is the second line right which let's see why that's the second line because we have a one here right so our first line for our name or for our name it's all going to be the same right but if we play the text now ah are you and then we go here and then now we're on going to be on line two so it's going to be the oh you're a real person and then line three is going to be oh i was stuck down here for years yep and then this is going to be the next line right and it's just going to go through all the lines just like just like you wrote them right same thing would happen here with the text okay and you see this here this is just this is bad you don't want that so to fix that you just got to come over here and play around so like we can make this a little bit larger and then yeah that goes away so oh you see that red do not just to play right and we can go through all of them just like that but let's go back to line one and actually we can remove these right because we're not gonna this is not gonna be the actual ending because we want it to be able to switch through them right so i'm gonna create a new variable and this is going to be called our current dialogue id and then we'll it'll equal it to zero so this is going to basically be like what line that we're on and we're going to make a new function which is going to be just an input function so input event and then we'll do if in if event dot is action action pressed and then we'll just do ui accept so if we click the enter key then we want to if this happens then we want to move on to the next script which we'll just make a new function so we'll just name this next script and then we'll go down here we'll make a new function we'll name this next script whoops we don't need this up here there we go next script and in here we are going to want to add on so our, we want our current dialog to plus equal one so right because if we're on dialog one and we click enter then it's going to say okay next script then we're going to go to dialog two right and then this is where we're going to want to go and do our nine patch name dot text this is where we're going to we're going to change our text up and we'll do dialog and then current dialog id whoops let's see so these need to be straight we're gonna have to do these straight brackets right and then just like we had on the other one and then our variable which is our name and then we can kind of do just copy and paste this exact same thing down one more and then instead of text we can do chat and then over here we can do text whoa okay wait never mind this needs to be chat and then this whoa 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 okay wait wait never mind never mind what am i doing what am i doing this is text and this is chat so there we go now we're gonna go up to our let's see so this is gonna change and then so instead of this is our variable right instead of us having a singular number this is so we can change through them and then we're gonna want to go up to our start function and i'm gonna go up here do, do we want to do this under the dot yeah because we want to load our dialogue dialog in first and then we're, we'll just do current dialog id equals negative one and then we'll do next script so on start we'll, we'll 
automatically start next script. And then where's our next script function? We need to add, let's add a little more to this. So we'll just go under here and then we'll do if current dialog ID is greater than or equal to the length of dialog. So this is basically meaning that we've got to the very end of our dialog, right? So we're on the last line and we click enter again. Then we want to close it, right? But for now we'll just return. But in a minute we're going to make this to where it kind of hides the dialog. So now if we play, hi, are you? And then you can kind of see we click enter and we go through all of them, right? And we get to the end and we can't go anymore. But eventually we'll hide that. So that works. Okay, now we want to go up here and we're going to create another variable and we're just going to do deactive and this is going to basically mean dialog. So if our dialog is active, we want to start it off as false. Then we want to go to our start function and up here we're actually we're going to yeah, we're going to need the changes because off bat we don't want to just start dialog, right? In the middle of our game, we're standing in our cave and we just have dialogue instantly come on right that's we don't want that we want to have to be able to interact with the uh with the npc before the dialogue comes on so we'll just do nine patch rect dot visible equals false right because we don't want our chat box to be visible on start right and then in start i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna move all this down and we're gonna do if deactive which means if dialogue's active, we'll, we'll return. And then we can go D deactive equals true. And then we can, now we want our uh, nine patch rect visible to equal true, right? Because now we want it to be. Whoops, 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 whoops. Because now we want it to be visible, right? Because now we're starting our dialogue right so now we want to go down let's go to our input function and then kind of like the same thing is up here but I'm just gonna do if not deactive and then if not deactive we'll return like this and then in our next script let's see we're gonna to want to change all this up now right because now we want it to be able to hide once we get to the end of our dialogue so We'll leave the return there because we need that. And we'll do just do deactive equals false. And then we want to get our nine patch rect and make it dot visible equals false because now it's not visible because we got to the very end of the line, right? So now if we play, it's not gonna even gonna be here. So instead of that, let's just start, right? So this is how it starts and then let's say Let's say we need to start our dialogue, right? We interact with our NPC and we're about to start our dialogue. This is what's going to happen. So it comes up, right? And then we click enter, enter, enter. We go through all the uh, things and now it should disappear and it does. So everything works, right? Because if we don't call start, then it's going to be hidden, right? And we can't do anything, which is good. So now everything's working really nicely and smoothly. But we need to uh, make our NPC be able to start the conversation with like an area 2D and everything like that. So, oh, we also need a timer, right? Because if we don't have a timer, it's going to keep going through it over and over. Because if we, if we click start, I mean, it's hard for us to see this, but if we click start and we like call the start function, and we're inside of our enemy 2D. I mean, you, you can't see it because it's it's almost impossible for you to see it right here because we don't have our enemy hooked up. But it will keep going over and over and through it. And it will keep restarting the dialogue as you're going through if you don't have a timer. Because it's gonna call the start function like a thousand times in a row, which is bad. And to do this, or to counter this, we want to add a timer node. And I'll show you what this is doing. So we'll add a timer node. Where I'm just gonna make this like point four seconds and then one shot and then we can send the timeout function to our dialogue and then in here 
let's see. So in here, instead of being up here in our next script function where it says deactive equals false, I'm just gonna copy this, put this into our timeout, and then up here, we can just at our timer dot start, is that it? Is that the function for a, to start a timer? Yeah, I, th I think it is, right. So timer.start and then when timeout then our dialog active is going to be called false so it doesn't keep replaying it over and over and over and over again right so now if we play you're not going to see it or it's not even showing because we haven't called the start function but that's just going to be that's that's going to help you in the future just, okay, so to start with our npc we need to go to our npc and then i'm going to go over here to our inspector i'm going to go to our collisions and we need to set our npc mask and stuff real fast so our npc mask we want it to only be able to interact with the player and then we want to make it layer five because layer five is going to be our npc layer and then we also need to go to our player real fast and make it mask all five layers right so now we're gonna to have to go to our npc we're gonna add into our NPC a area 2D. And then we're also gonna add in a collision shape. So this is gonna basically be the zone where our player can talk. So collision shape. And then we can kind of just go around it like this. So if our player is in, in this area, then our NPC will talk to the player, right? And we also need to go to our area 2D. We also need to go to our collisions here and then layer five and then mask two. And just like this. So if our player comes inside of here and clicks enter, then the dialogue is going to show. And also we need to instance our dialogue, right? So cave that NPC and then we're going to instance our dialogue scene. So it's going to look like this now. But we instance it, so now we want to go to our area 2D. We're going to create a brand new script, and we can name this whatever we want. We'll just name it NPC Dialog. GD, and then in here we're going to need a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to remove all this. All right, actually, it's not that much. It's not that much at all. So here we're going to get our input because this is where we're going to see our input to see if we're going to talk to the. Uh, talk if we're trying to talk to the npc so we'll do if input dot is action pressed and i'm going to use the exact same key that we use to go through the dialogue and length so we need to get over overlapping bodies so we'll get our overlapping bodies and then we just want to make sure our overlapping bodies are greater than zero because the only thing that our NPC can see right now is a player. So if there's a body in there, it has to be the player. That's the only body that can interact with the get overlapping bodies function here. And then we'll just go and we'll need to make a new function. So we'll just do use dialogue and then make a new function, which is going to be named use why can I not type dialog and then we need a variable we'll name this variable dialog and then with this we need to access our dialog so we need to access our dialog thing here right so dialog will be equal we'll just get parent dot get whoa why can I not type get node and then we want to get our dialog and then we need to go if dialog is or if dialog is true so it basically means if we have if we have this here then dialog dot start and what this is going to do dot start is going to go in here and it's going to play this right so it's going to call the start function like we were trying to call up here so once it calls to start, then the entire dialogue system is going to start. If we go to our area 2D, let me show you what's going on here. So if we're in the area 2D, it's gonna, and we click enter, it's gonna go and it's gonna check if we're in the 
if we're in this area and if we are if the overlapping body is greater than zero which means we're in the area then it's going to call the use dialog function so then we'll go down here and then we're going to get our dialog player this is kind of a dialog player and we're going to just access that and then we're going to do if it if we have so then if we have this then we're just going to go here and then dot start which is going to call the function in here which is going to start the dialog system so if we go to our cave and we click play you see our enemy we click enter over here nothing happens we go up to our player in the area we click enter strange man ah are you and then we can kind of go through the dialogue and then we have an error let me uh let's see what happened so no instance so okay it's something with our timer maybe we don't need the timer Let's test something. There. Let's delete the timer. I'm just gonna remove the timer. This deactive here. We're gonna have to move back up here. I I don't think I don't think this would work though, would it? Let's see. Yeah, see, cause now it keeps going through. It will keep going through for infinite. Yeah, exactly. So we we do need the timer. So whatever I just did, do not do, do not remove all that stuff. If you are trying to follow exactly step by step, but let's go to our, where, where was that? Where was that? Dialogue. Let's add the timer node back. We'll add 0.4 seconds, one shot node, timeout, boom. Up here, boom. And then we'll go at timer.start. That's the function to start a timeout, right? All right, let's see what the error message was. So we go up here, we go through. Okay, so now it works. Let me see. Let's give it one more shot. Yeah, okay, so I, I have no idea what that error was. We we literally changed nothing there, and now it's working. Okay, so I, I have no idea what was going on there. See, I, yeah, I thought that was a faulty error. But we talked to our NPC, and we go through everything just like that, as many times as we want. So, strange man, ah, are you? Oh, you're a real person. I have been down here for years. Oh, and also, do not touch that red plate, which we'll add that in the next episode. That's basically going to trigger the boss fight. You have to trust me on this. It will not end well, so please. And then that's kind of all our NPC says. But that's pretty cool. Right. So we can now talk to our NPC. Oh, you're a real person. I've been down here for years. Bop, 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 bop. Just like so. So that is how you uh that is how you add dialogue to a to a RPG. And it works pretty good. Right. And obviously the name up here can be changed. The font can be changed. The letters can be changed. The colors can be changed so you can make it look good. But for the tutorial, I just use goat out letters. So they look kind of like blurry ish. They look pixelated, which is not that good. I mean, it's good for a pixel game, but these do not look good at all. And you can add animation to where they like bounce up and down, but that's pretty easy to do. And this is just the main dialogue system, which works like a charm so that's all for this video on dialogue and another episode for the rpg series i hope you learned something about how npcs dialogue work and just dialogue works in general for a godot game and i hope this series is helping you create your very first game in godot remember next episode we're going to be adding a boss slime for our player to fight so yeah a boss fight but thank you guys all so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode we where we will be creating a full working boss fight for our player but until next time, have a safe and a wonderful rest of your day.